In this video, we're going to go over the best places for adventure travel for you to travel to now. I'll share some of my favorite places that I've been and I can highly recommend. In the meantime, be thinking of your favorite destinations you want to visit or have visited and let me know about them. So what exactly is adventure travel? When I first started getting into adventuring, I started off with simple hikes. It was a lot, to be honest. I had to learn about hiking shoes, proper clothing, and just doing the smallest hikes felt like a feat of accomplishment. And honestly, it was pushing me to my limits. Some of the hikes, especially in Washington State, are quite grueling because of the mountains that we have here. They are a great workout, but kind of intimidating for beginners. Yet, yeah, I stuck with it. And since then, I got into scrambling and mountaineering. Now I do glacier climbs. Over time, I continuously pushed my limits. This adventuring really was kind of a journey of growth for me. A journey where I constantly found those comfort zones, I smashed them and take on higher and higher challenges, get to higher and higher mountains, do crazier and crazier things like car camping to backpack camping to winter camping. And there's a lot to learn along the way, but every single step of the way, you are getting better and better. But this is adventure for me, that personal growth and arc where you don't necessarily have a defined end or necessarily know everything that's going to be in between, but it does push you beyond your limits and you grow. And along the way with travel, you see some amazing things, starry nights along a beautiful mountainous landscape, the way dusty snow shimmers in the sunlight as the wind picks it and blows it in front of you is magical. Adventure travel involves stepping out of your comfort zone and embracing a little bit of that uncertainty. It's about immersing yourself in culture, nature, and new experiences. Adventure travel doesn't necessarily mean you have to go all the way across the world. It could be somewhere foreign to you and you going there and pushing your comfort zones. Learning new cultures, ways of life, and doing things you never saw yourself doing before. And ultimately, adventure travel pushes your limits and fosters your growth. When it comes to adventure travel, the world is truly your playground. And I've been fortunate enough to explore some truly incredible places. First of which would be Iceland. I can never forget Iceland in terms of its incredibly vast landscapes of desolateness, which may not sound so appealing, but until you experience it, it is truly a sight to behold. And just as you're driving, you see what seems like a giant cloud filling the sky, but it's actually not a cloud. It's a big old glacier that is taller than the mountains. And it has a single forest that a lot of Icelanders treat as like a vacation spot to get away from the desolateness. And it's on the east side. It's definitely worth checking out. It has some really good hikes including this one hike which has a fairy tale where you get to go see the queen of the fairies and when you get there there's a super emerald green lake with these big old boulders that look like castles spotting the lake it's something kind of out of this world i've never seen anything like it in all of my travel it's very worthwhile to hike out to it and honestly if you don't hike iceland you're probably going to miss like 50 to 60 percent of the amazingness that Iceland offers. It's definitely hiking territory, but on top of that, in the night times, you get a chance to see the Aurora Borealis, which we got to see a couple times. One time we were in what they call a swimming pool. It's a natural geothermal water source. And we were just sitting there relaxing and then suddenly someone pointed up and we could see just the night sky filled with Aurora Borealis. I wish I had my camera, but it was just amazing to sit back in this warm water and sit there and watch the lights dancing across the sky. And I remember some truly amazing hikes where you kind of just go down this big old crack and you kind of weave in and out of this little lake and just tons of unfortunately birds inside there that have gotten trapped and have no way out because of the lighting and such. Anyways, but I yeah, call it the bird graveyard, but still Besides that, it's a beautiful hike. There's one part, if you keep going, you have to climb up a waterfall, which I don't recommend for normal people. You have to be super adventurous to do it. Uh, anyways, with that said, there's lots of interesting things to do there. There's 
a lot. So one thing that really struck me of Iceland is the amount of fairy tales and folklore that exists there. And just taking a little bit of time to learn about it and think about in this vast desolateness that people have grew up around thousands of years. Think of how many stories you could see looking at across that landscape and seeing into the nighttime and things moving. I imagine you can start seeing things and you can start making stories of your own. But Iceland is named the land of fire and ice for a reason because it has a lot of volcanic activity. Sometimes you can make it out there to see the active volcanoes and also ice being big glaciers. And if you go there during the summer, it's a very good temperature. And even better, because at Equinox, it can be daylight 24 hours, almost 24 hours, maybe 24 hours, I'm not sure. But it, most of the day will be daylight, so you will have plenty of light and you can, it's just always light. Which, not so good for Singora Borealis, but really good for just having extremely long days and being able to see a lot of stuff. Where can you find inspiration for your next adventure? For myself, my inspiration sources often do not come from Instagram or generally YouTube either or other sources because they can be a little bit hard to find. The things that I like to do, especially for where I'm at in my own adventure, is push off the beaten path. For me, I'm generally seeking these hidden gems, things that I have to kind of figure out from reading books, watching TV, and probably my most common source, other travelers, because every single time it, it never fails when I travel and I talk to other people who also do adventure travel, like my list multiplies like tenfold. And I have like start writing them down, all these different places I've never heard of and just talking to other people and all the things that they've done. You just have endless things of like, that sounds really cool. I gotta see this. I wanna see sperm whales. I wanna see humpback whales. I wanna climb that mountain. I wanna go see a tiger. It's, it's just grows and grows and from all the different things that you're gonna hear of. Make sure you're talking to people as you travel as well. And you'll meet people, especially doing things. Like scuba diving is probably one of the most social sports I've ever participated in. Hiking a little bit, uh, but definitely scuba diving. And I also poke around Reddit at times. There can be some good source. But the most important thing is because it's off the bean path and it's less popular. That, and that's really what it comes down to. It's not the things that are going to push your limits are things that are uncommon and generally less popular because they're a little bit harder. They have less infrastructure, they're more remote, they're harder to do. Less people tend to do them. So you'll see them a lot less on social media, you'll see them a lot less on most of the websites you probably frequent because they are less popular. However, there are some credible sources like Discovery Channel, National Geographic that cover these more rare things because they're obviously very well established and they try to really focus on that adventure sense of nature. So be sure to look for those sources of information that talk about things that are off the beam path and really most importantly to our next level. It's going to make you a little bit more uncomfortable because obviously you don't want to go somewhere that's going to totally be out of comfort zone. You want the next step, which is a little bit out of your comfort zone. That's going to help you grow a little bit and not just like challenge you and be like, if you don't survive this, you're going to die kind of thing. No, you want to ease into it over time. Another amazing place that reminds me a lot of Iceland, but is unique and beautiful in its own way is Patagonia. The Patagonia ice field sits in South America and it's this vast ice field that used to be a piece of Antarctica as South America and Antarctica slowly disconnected over time. Piece of that glacier, that big old ice field sits on top of the this mountain crown and it has many glaciers extending off of it. And it's actually very hard to see the ice field itself. It requires an extreme amount of adventure. <laughs> in a way, it could be a little bit dangerous for most. However, I know in Torres del Paine, they have the O Trek, which on the top part of the O, you get a nice viewpoint and it's probably the most accessible and easy for most people viewpoint to see the ice field. And if you just do the W Trek alone, it's super beautiful. It's amazing. I highly recommend. It's one of my big 
biggest regrets when I went to Peru. If you go there on the west side, make sure you stay one extra day on the west side so that you can, there's this big old lagoon and it has a bunch of glaciers in it. Go canoeing in the lagoon with all the icebergs. And maybe if you're lucky, you'll see one flip, but it's one experience I missed and I really wish I could go back and do it someday. But anyways, with that said, Make sure you do that. And just if you have time to do the W Trek, it's still beautiful, but you have to do the O Trek. The only way to see the ice field is on the top part of O. But otherwise, aside from the ice field, most of the beauty is on the W Trek. Other super highlights from Patagonia are El Chitan and Calafate. I mean, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the names of these towns. It's been a while since I traveled there, several years. So I'm sure I'm butchering it and I apologize. But these places, are hiking galore. I think you'll definitely enjoy it most if you do hike. There are some easy hikes, but I would say get a little bit in shape and be ready for that sense of adventure and do the medium hikes but and even the hard hikes if you can because everywhere you go, you see some really amazing things and they're worthwhile hikes. One hike that my wife and I did called the Waymo Circuit. And I cannot recommend this to a lot of people because this is on an extreme end of an adventure. And before you do the hike, they make you watch a video basically telling you how dangerous it is and trying to dissuade you from doing it. And they don't even have it marked anywhere. They don't want people to know about it. Don't let them know you heard from me. But really, I really want to also encourage that if you're going to do the Waymos or you have to know what you're doing. Beast. Beyond that, it's one of the best hikes I've ever done. It is an extremely beautiful hike, but also very dangerous if you're not prepared for it. So really don't go there unless you do have a high level preparedness. You are comfortable doing mountaineering and fairly dangerous scrambling. And there are a number of places where you can basically just walk up to the sidewall of one of the massive glacier arms and just sit there. It's almost mesmerizing. You see it and you see pieces of the sidewall falling off into the lagoon. And you just want to sit there and just wait and hopefully see a huge piece of the wall collapse at any moment. It's just, I don't know, it's amazing how much time you can just sit there working at an ice uh, glacier, but uh, it is quite entertaining. How do you prepare for an adventure trip? Let's talk about Waymo Circus since I just mentioned it. Being a fairly perilous journey and a dangerous one. So there's a lot of planning that goes into adventure travel and a lot of it happens before you're actually doing it. Meaning you have to evaluate what do you, where do you need to be? So we studied where we need to be, the time of season, the conditions around the season, and made sure we had plenty of time. The Waymo circuit usually takes about four days to do. We stayed in the region for almost, I think, 10 days. Four days is all it takes is four days, but there's plenty of beautiful hikes to do around there. But we wanted to be able to pick and choose the best weather and move around since the Waymo circuit was the primary reason we were there. Further, we needed to research how to be allowed to do the Waymo circuit. It's not a normal hike and you need a permit. What was the process of what kind of things do we need to prepare for? What kind of gear do we need? There's two steel wires along the circuit that you have to be able to cross yourself and be able to tie your own safety on the steel wire. It all is just a wire. You have to be ready to put your bag on the wire, put yourself on the wire, and just climb across that wire. And it's gonna feel dangerous, but you have to have the confidence that you can do it. My wife and I, we do top rope climbing, but we wanted to brush up. We wanted to make sure that we knew how to do the walk, do the knot very well in the wild and learn some new knots. So we, it was easier skill building. I, we needed to improve our skills and thus also improving our confidence. So when we're there, we're not questioning, can we do this? We know we've done this before and we can do it again. Further, you have no internet anywhere on the route, so you have to go prepared for that. Either have an offline map, which we had an offline map, and we also had a digital map. But honestly, even though your best plans and preparation think it looks good, sometimes you get a wrench in your plans, being that the trail is very hard to follow on Waymo Circuit. We got lost a little bit on Waymo Circuit. The maps, they are great at guiding, but not small finite details of turn here, turn here, turn there. It, you really can't see the finiteness of where you are. You just know approximate locations with a map. And even with GPS, 
you get approximate location and usually that's enough but when you're on very dangerous and steep surfaces sometimes just five to ten meters away from something can be quite perilous anyways we ended up going down a wrong route and it was quite dangerous because we got stuck on this scree field and a super steep fall and the scree field started moving on us and my wife was stuck on it and I was already on the other side, but she was to the point where she couldn't move without the whole wall starting to cave. I was able to toss my backpack somewhere safe. I ran over and I grabbed her bag. And at the same time she jumped and I grabbed and we saw the whole sidewall avalanche right as I pulled her over. Thankfully, I pulled her to safety and we were both surviving after that, but it was dangerous. But this is the thing that we signed up for, adventure travel. You. We are pushing our limits and a lot of that is pushing into the unknown and you have to have the bravery, you have to have the skills, you have to have the confidence to be able to handle when things go wrong and that's really important as well. And with that, we even had, we originally planned a four day trip, but bad weather was closing in on us. So we had to take that four day trip and we packed it into a three day trip. We had to go even at an accelerated pace, basically merging the first two days into the first day and making it to the second campsite in that time frame which put us in the afternoon of crossing over this pass which was also very dangerous because of how windy it gets it's the most intense winds i have ever experienced it's almost like diving in current where you just can't push against the current i had to basically crawl on the ground to get through this v-shaped narrow path in this ridge line to get to the other side because it's a v all the wind was being pushed through this path and it was it was intense my wife i looked back on uh, at her and i saw her sunglasses just rip right off of her face and these are mountaineering glasses so they hug your face and they're supposed to be on there pretty tightly unfortunately we didn't have ripcord and they just like flew into the distance it was really hard for her to get by because of how the sun was also right there because it's close to the end of the day and is very bright as well but anyways with that we helped each other we crawled like a current dive all the way through that valley onto the other side and from there it was it's fairly straightforward to the campsite where we were really happy to have made and after that, it was much easier. But Waymo Circuit is still like a legendary hike in terms of like danger and beauty in my book. So with that said, it's important to conduct comprehensive research on where you're going, including research into permits that you might need and safety concerns that might exist. Take necessary precautions. This may include getting travel insurance and medical vaccinations. In some places in the world, you can get very sick from things like malaria, but they have vaccines they can take and make sure you don't get malaria. Trust me, I've had malaria, the worst kind of strain, and I would not recommend it on my worst enemies. Develop essential skills they need for adventure travel. And you'll find the skill list continues to expand and expand the higher and more dangerous stuff you tend to go on. But off to start, you can start with things like navigation, first aid, and outdoor survival techniques. Egypt is one of the places that's really high on my list of places I've adventured to and really enjoyed. Now this might be of some debate for a lot of people because I've read on Reddit and I've seen a lot of discussion in the travel space of how Egypt is not very fun at all. But in the spirit of adventure travel, I think Egypt is really quite good. Why is that? Because Egypt has some really amazingly rich culture and history that is just waiting for you to explore. Now, I do have to address that there is a lot of scamming going on and there is a massive culture around it. And there is certainly a lot of scamming going on. But with that, you have to challenge yourself to go there and not get scammed not get ripped off. Try and do a little bit of research of those scams and see how well you do. It will push your comfort zones, which is what we're here for, right? This is what we're trying to do to improve ourselves 
to challenge ourselves. But with that, the social nature comes into it as well. It can be kind of fun if you take it from that example. And honestly, the people there are not dangerous. They are quite friendly. They're going to try and you're basically a walking wallet to a lot of locals. But with that said, at least as far as I know, there is not too much crime that happens to tourists, as long as you're being a decent person. And beyond that, Egypt has some amazing things to see. Some of the most rich history that I've ever been able to go through. And it's well preserved because of the desert and the region. You can go there and see a lot of it. And there's just a lot of excavating going on. They're still excavating new sites. And there's maybe some reasons to go back as more and more places open up. But really now, I think you have to see the popular sites where there's going to be lots of tourists and you have to see the pyramids. You have to go there and you can't go not go to Giza. You'll see tons of tourists there, but then go and see the other pyramids. There's oh, there's hundreds, if not thousands of pyramids around Cairo and hardly anyone goes to the other ones. I remember going to like the Ben Perry pyramid and we were the only ones there especially if you go in the morning. And so get off the beaten path. Experience was adventuring. You might need a private guide, which I'd recommend anyways, because it will be more personal to you and you'll be able to go to where you go. And there's just lots of ruins which don't have a lot of tourists going to them because they're not super accessible. And if you're wanting to go there and you're wanting to be adventurous, there are guides that will take you there, keep you safe, and it'll be a great experience. And Egypt is just full of them. Where do you begin the planning process for an adventure trip? So we already talked about the pre-planning, the research, and now you have your skills, you've figured out the gear you need to bring and the permits you need. Now you gotta book everything. You have to start booking the plan and putting in your reservations and often paying for what you need in your plan. You need to figure out the right dates. You need to figure out if you want that buffer period like we did. So we were gonna do a hike so we we were there for 10 days, even though we really needed four, but we took three and this was all part of the plan. Booking hotels is easy because there's often no cancellation fees, so you can cancel those. The real hard part is the flights. The flights you cancel, there's going to be a heavy fee, but you want to make sure you book those last. So try and plan your hotels, the days you want to be there. Since flights are so hard to move around, we generally will start understanding what our schedule is going to look like. We need 10 days to be here, but we also need two days to travel there, two days back, and maybe we want to see this other place, so add five days. But we're looking at 19 days, but I'm just gonna round it up to 20 to make it a nice even number, and also some extra security, some buffers, not gonna hurt anything. And I'm gonna start booking the hotels, and I'm gonna start now looking for flights. And flights, since you want to be a little bit flexible with flights because the prices can fluctuate a significant amount so then book your flights you know how many days you need so i need 20 and so you want to look for a return flight uh, some people might recommend one way i we generally do return flights just because it's a little bit cheaper and we already know how much days we're going to need and this is part of our plan so we've already planned it if you don't like planning or you want to have a little bit more flexibility you can do one way for the exchange of a little bit more money with that said since we do plan and we usually plan in those buffer days already we usually will just book round trip and lock it in. We're flexible. Now the big thing is finding the best deal of the flight. And once we do find it, we lock it in and then we book all the hotel. We already know how many days it is. So we book all the hotels where we're going to be and we know where we need to be and everything's booked at that point. And we need a rental car. We'll also reserve a rental car. We buy the permits for the dates that we're going to be there. We know exactly what our plan is and we lock everything in that we need to in advance. There's plenty of online resources to help streamline this process and make it a little bit easier and also visualize. I may have mentioned here before, but I am an engineer, a software engineer. One of the problems I've tried to solve is solving this exact problem. So I actually have built a very custom tool on a website called TravelWise. I'll link it in the description below. If you're interested, you can check it out, but it's supposed to help visualize this planning process. So it's something that I've built and tried to solve this problem myself. And I really wanted to 
make it easy to build a plan and customize and be able to visualize it and move things around. This is what the tool does. If that sounds interesting to you, check it out. It's free of charge and let me know if you have any feedback on it. And make sure you stay flexible and adaptable. As anything I've mentioned, even with our best of plans, things go wrong. And that's part of the adventure. That's part of the growth. In fact, you should expect things to go wrong. We'll have contingencies, have buffer days, have ideas of things that could go wrong and try to plan what happens if this happens, we're gonna do this. You can have an idea of how to have those contingencies built into your plan. If it does happen, you can deal with it easier. And even if you haven't planned for it, it just ca catches you off guard with the experience and your own know-how, you will grow. This is part of the adventure process. It's gonna make you uncomfortable. You try to make it through still and learn from what you can do better and how you can improve the next time you start planning a trip. Let's talk about Turkey. Turkey is an incredible place. I can't say how much I enjoyed going to Turkey for the, the, for the people we met, the culture, the history, the beautiful landscape. And if you're into things like Neolithic history, like I am, you can find some of the best Neolithic research going on in Turkey on the southeast side of it. And it is mind blowing. So Turkey just has it all. They're from really great hiking, beaches, mountains, amazing ruins. And let me emphasize the best ruins you will see are off the beaten path. There are places where we could go to that had carnival cruise ships that had access and we saw thousands and thousands of people. In fact, it was some of the worst sites we went to because I don't know, it's people being people, but just trash your selfies it just feels like it takes you out of the element to be honest but then we went with a private guide to a tour i think pmd if, if i remember what it's called and we did this tour and we were the only ones at some of the ruins only ones we had it all to ourselves this is adventure travel just getting off and there's tons pmd is still a popular one it's a popular tour and you see it there are ruins that aren't even advertised they could go to and explore. And that's even more adventurous than what we did. There are still lots of places to explore off the beam path that you will just have an amazing time with in Turkey. And if you enjoy history, man, history is, is immense in Turkey because of all of the different cultures who warred for Turkey. Turkey is like the crown jewel of Europe and Asia and everyone wanted control over it. If anything, Turkey is a little bit different than Egypt in terms of history because Egypt had one monoculture for thousands of years. Turkey had so many and they just built on top of each other. So if anything, it's just interesting to see how that changes a people and a culture over time and how much mystery there is in Turkey if you start getting into the ancient history of the underground cities, the Neolithic civilizations. It is quite deep and enjoyable. So what does it mean to have an adventure mindset? If anything, through this video, I hope you've seen how adventure has helped me grow in terms of my own ability to be confident with myself, to be courageous and do more advanced things as I continue to improve on my adventuring. And now I do some fairly impressive adventures. I won't say I'm top of the world in terms of my adventuring. There's a lot better people, but I am still growing and I'm still wanting to explore my boundaries and continue to improve where I am. Find your boundaries and explore those. Make yourself a little uncomfortable. Embrace that sense of adventure. And through my entire life, this adventure has given me fulfillment, has given me joy, and the best memories I have in my life are these adventures and the people I've experienced with. So, adventure is a state of mind that can be cultivated by seeking out new experiences and embracing uncertainty. Approach challenges with an open mind and a willingness to step outside of your comfort zone. Find joy and excitement in the journey, whether you're exploring distant lands or discovering hidden treasures in your own backyard. Remember, it's not the end that's always important, but the journey in between. The last top destination for adventure that I have for you is 
Dun, dun, dun. Peru. Peru is number one on my list because of the culture. Oh, there's a lot of reasons, honestly. But some of the best places we visited, the Amazon rainforest or the cloud rainforest, which is part of the Amazon that is in the Peru region. From doing hikes in the jungle where you get to see the macaws gather and lick the clay, which helps their digestion system in the early morning and see the monkeys swinging from atop the trees to hiking to the top of the tree line and seeing all of the night bugs that come out, the flash bug, what are they called? The bugs that light up in the middle of night. We don't have them where I live, but it's just amazing to see so many thousands of them flashing here and there from the top of the trees. And so we were treated to a massive thunderstorm that was just pushing over the Andes Mountains there and creating tons of lightning. And it was just amazing to see. It's otherworldly almost to Cuzco. Learning about the history of Cuzco is truly heartbreaking. Learning about the Incan Empire and how much they achieved and going and being able to hike the Incan Trail all the way to Machu Picchu and see all the different ruins in between. It is really quite amazing and feels a lot similar to things you'll see in Egypt as well. Of course Machu Picchu when you get there all the ruins in between are you'll have fairly to yourself but once you get to Machu Picchu you'll see crowds of people and Machu Picchu is quite legendary to be honest. It is crowded just expect that but you have to see it. You have to see Machu Picchu. But Cuzco is also quite special in and of itself. You can spend some time and see the, the highlights of the city and all the way to Lima. Lima is considered the food capital of South America and some call it the food capital of the world. There is great food there and nice beaches and it's a nice city. Peru has a lot going for it from history, culture, food, and lots of things to adventure especially from the Amazon and all the hiking that you'll do. It is something you will never forget. I've been on lots of adventures and I hope to continue to adventure and maybe you will be able to join me on some of those adventures and I look forward to it. If I've inspired you to get a little bit more sense of adventure, then I think you're going to enjoy this next video that I have made for the more common person who works a full-time job and wants to travel more. And I have a lot of tips and tricks for you to travel more and embrace this lifestyle. Until next time.